ACMI productions are only made possible with your support. Visit patreon.com slash ACMI to learn how you can help. Okay, I'm calling this meeting to order on Wednesday, April 24th, 2024. My name is Greg Christiana. I'm the town moderator of the town of Arlington. I want to welcome everyone to Arlington's 217th annual town meeting. As I say every year, please hold your applause until the meeting is dissolved. Let us now take a moment to remember all the town meeting members and all the Arlington, Arlington volunteers who have served the town and passed away in the last year, including last year, uh, Joan Banks, Dennis Corbett, Bernie Green, Charlie Lyons, and Ed Soy. And this year, Pat Apetizano, Ted Peluso, Donald Sandrelli, and uh, Corinne Rainville, a former town clerk. Let us remember them and their contributions and all others who have passed that, uh, if, if, I, if I missed anybody, uh, during this moment of silence, please. Okay, on another serious note, uh, today is, as I mentioned, is April 24th and is uh, widely recognized as uh, Armenian Genocide Remembrance Day to remember the genocide that began 109 years ago today in 1915 against the Armenian people. We remember the 1.5 million individuals whose lives were taken, the survivors and their families, especially those who have made, their, uh, made Arlington their home. Uh, we pause now to honor their loss. Thank you. In the back of the hall, you can find physical printed copies of the annual report. Feel free to grab a copy at the break or after the meeting adjourns. Uh, let's now turn to town meeting business. The warrant before us includes uh, two articles, a lot more than that, but it, among them are two articles that seek to change the start time of town meeting from 8 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. I mentioned this in my opening remarks uh, because it affects the scheduling of the meeting, uh, and I think it's appropriate to, to raise this now. Uh, one of these articles also seeks to change the end time of the town meeting to 10.30 p.m. Um, I sent a memo about this last week, but just to make this clear tonight to everyone, uh, traditionally town meeting starts at 8 p.m. and adjourns around 11 p.m. On the recommendation of the town meeting procedures committee, I will entertain motions to adjourn starting at 10.30 p.m. on a trial basis starting tonight. Full disclosure, as moderator, I'm chair of that committee, so it's not exactly a fully independent body. Uh, trial basis uh, means that if motions to adjourn keep failing until around 11 p.m. night after night, then I will return to past practice, or we will return to past practice of, of entertaining motions to adjourn around 11 p.m. So we're gonna try something a little bit different. Uh, that would, of course, it, since we'll retain an 8 p.m. start time throughout this annual town meeting, that means if the meeting does adjourn around 10.30 p.m., it means that we're gonna have a shorter meeting, two and a half hours, give or take, rather than three hours. So that could mean more meeting nights, but shorter nights. Um, and so that, that's the call of the meeting. Uh, okay, also, I'm told that when requesting to speak via your electronic handset, uh, which all of you town meeting members should, should now have, um, you'll need to press the number nine button to request to speak. I cannot vouch for what will happen if you press another button. Um, so we're actually gonna run a quick little experiment right now for just a minute so everyone can get comfortable pressing nine to speak. Because uh, the check-in was essentially voting, I believe. And so can we switch over to, uh, to a, a speaker screen? Uh, and let's show the, and so to do this in an orderly fashion, uh, town meeting members, if you're in precincts one through seven, uh, try requesting to speak. Uh, can we show the, the speaker queue up here? Uh, I can see the speaker queue on my view, but I, oh, there we go. Um, okay, and is this uh, time meeting members one th uh, in precincts one through seven? Can we scroll down uh, so folks can verify if their request, I see someone press 10. Um, I'm not sure whether, whether to recognize that. Um, Okay, great. Now, can we clear the speaker queue? And once that's cleared, uh, town meeting members in precincts 8 through 14, 
uh, if you can request to speak to see if your name appears in the list. If you want, you can try pressing it again. If you're on the list, you can try pressing it and see if it toggles you off. I don't think that it does. Uh, it does? Okay. So if you want to request to speak, hit the nine button an odd number of times. Uh, and okay, let's scroll to the bottom. Of course, if you take yourself off the list, unfortunately, if you try to get back on in all seriousness, I believe you'll be put to the end of the queue. And so that would be really unfortunate if you were waiting a long time and then uh, you got bumped because of that. So try to be careful with your handsets. I apologize for the finickiness of this system, but this is what we're working with at the moment. Okay, can we now clear the queue? And uh, now, uh, town meeting members in precincts 15 through 21, if you can request to speak to verify that your handset button number nine is working. And we'll scroll to the bottom. And eyeballing it, yeah, I can confirm that's everybody, okay. Um, okay, thanks for uh, working through that exercise. Uh, I'd now like to invite uh, the town of Arlington's, uh, Mr. Moore, did you? Uh, yep, yep, uh, Mr., uh, uh, Mr. Wagner? Do you have a point of order? Yeah, point of order, Carl Wagner, Precinct 15. Could I humbly request that the uh, action to take yourself off the list in future would be a different key than the, the key to put yourself on the list? Because I'm sure many of us, like me, have frantically pressed to get ourselves on the list and removed ourselves from the list, probably. Thank you. I'll take that into consideration, and I'd suggest that uh, folks work on some breathing exercises <laughs> to stay calm, to keep those fingers from twitching too much. Thank you. Um, Okay, now I invite the town's poet laureate, uh, Jean Flanagan, uh, who will deliver uh, the invocation. Ms. Ms. Flanagan. Good evening. It's an honor to be here tonight and to share my poem about William Dawn Jaws with you. In the spirit of Patriot's Day and the Arlington 250 celebrations, most of us know about Paul Revere, but not much about William Dawes. Patriot William Dawes. On April 18, 1775, Paul Revere was captured by the Brits. On his way to Concord, bayonets at his back, he never made it. It was Dawes who rode to warn the Minutemen, sneaked by the regulars at Boston Gate, went west towards Roxbury, Brookline, and Brighton. Yet, I know of no statues of Dawes, but like many of us, he just did his job, received little credit for his ride to Lexington. His warning, led to the victory, the first of the American Revolution. Today, let us remember William Dawes, who when called to duty, focused on the goal and not the glory. As you gather tonight to make decisions for our town, remember it's not always the most boisterous person who makes the biggest impact. May you dwell with the spirit of victory in the quiet light of a job well done. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Flanagan. Uh, let's now take a vote to consent to the use of the satellite room. Can we bring up that vote, please? This is something we've been doing since, uh, I believe, last annual town meeting, last April. Point of order? Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry, I skipped ahead to number five on the agenda. Uh, yes, thank you, uh, Mr. Harrelson. I think that was Mr. Harrelson. Uh, we'll now swear in town meeting members uh, elected in the April election or appointed to fill a vacancy. Uh, so if we can switch over to apologies for that. 
Uh, Mr. Wagner. Thank you, Mr. Moderator Carl Wagner, Precinct 15. Are we going to sing the national anthem? Uh, we will. I mean, that, that's your choice. We want to sing it. It will be performed, yes. Thank you. Yep. Okay. Okay, so uh, all new town meeting members, if you haven't been sworn in yet, please stand. Welcome. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, we'll now take the, uh, the town meeting oath. Uh, so repeat after me. Uh, I, state your name. Will participate fully and will fairly evaluate all matters. Actually, you can read the whole thing. So if you want to just read, like, oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, so let's start from the beginning. Sorry. Uh, I, state your name. Will participate. Great, thank you. Congratulations. Okay, can we now bring up the vote to uh, consent to the satellite room, and next time I'll bring a metronome for the oath. Okay, okay so the vote f before us now is, oh, can, can we show that again? The, uh, I'll, just, I'll just read it. Can we show the, the vote screen? Yeah. Uh, so the vote here is uh, that duly elected representative town meeting members of the town of Arlington hereby consent and agree to conduct this meeting and address all articles in the warrant by in-person participation utilizing the town hall auditorium and the satellite room in the town hall complex via live audio and video. Um, so now let's bring up a vote screen. If you uh, consent to that vote, uh, press one for yes on your handset, uh, press two for no, and three to abstain. And this will serve as our, our test vote tonight. Okay, do, do we have a countdown on our timer? Okay. Okay, and the vote passes, 201 in the affirmative, four in the negative, and two abstentions. So uh, the meeting consents. Is this a test vote? Oh, can we show the votes? Yeah, thank you, Mr. Wagner. Can we show the votes on that? So everyone can confirm that we got the right votes. Just uh, leave the screen up for a few seconds before we go to the next set of precincts. So if you're in precincts uh, one through three, uh, they'll be on the screen right now. Okay. And precincts four through six, please verify your vote. And precincts seven through nine are now being displayed. And now precincts 10 through 12, check your votes please. And precincts 13 through 15, please verify your votes that they were registered the way that you intended. Uh, once, let's just get through the, the, the screens for, and then we'll take the point of order. Uh, precincts 16 through 18, please check your votes. And then the last screen, precincts 19 through 21. Uh, Yep, uh, we had a point of order. Yep. Uh, Mr. Rosenthal. Mark Rosenthal, Precinct 14. Um, I pressed the one to vote yes, 
and my name did not show that I voted. Okay, uh, can you um, take it over to the side, to the, uh, the gentleman standing there by the exit sign, and they'll take a look at your handset, thank you. Okay, so having cycled through the votes, uh, I now invite the Monotomy Minutemen and anyone else who happens to be wearing 18th century garb to, in a procession, uh, uh, and uh, yeah, go ahead, please, thank you. Thank you, that's the Monotomy Minutemen. And at this highly patriotic moment, I just wanna remind folks that there is a vacancy currently on the Arlington 250 Committee uh, to, sell, to pr make preparations for celebrations and remembrances of uh, the 250th anniversary of Arlington's role, Monotomy at the time, uh, in the American Revolutionary War. Uh, so if anyone, and especially town meeting members, if you're interested, uh, please let me know. Uh, I now recognize uh, the chair of the select board, uh, Mr. DeCourcy. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. It is requested that the members of the select board and elected officials of the town, town manager, department heads of the town and staff, superintendent of schools and staff, committees, commissions and boards of the town, Minuteman Regional Vocational Technical School District Committee and Superintendent, members of the General Court representing Arlington, members of the Arlington Retirement Board, employees and volunteers supporting electronic voting, and also any consultants who have been retained to work for the town relative to articles to be acted on by this meeting, and representatives of the news media, media be permitted to sit within the town meeting enclosure. Uh, all those in favor, say yes. Yes. 
All those opposed? It is unanimous. Uh, Madam Clerk, do you have reason to believe that this meeting was appropriately called by the select board and that the constable made a return of service on the warrant in accordance with the laws? Yes, I do. Uh, Mr. DeCourcy? Thank you, Mr. Moderator. It is moved that if all the business of the meeting as set forth in the warrant for the annual town meeting is not disposed of at this session, when the meeting adjourns, it adjourns to Monday, April 29th, 2024, at 8 o'clock p.m. Do we have a second? second? We have a second from Mr. Moore. Uh, all those in favor, say yes. Yes. All those opposed? Uh, it, it is unanimous. Uh, I now invite the uh, town manager to invite, uh, do you wish to invite department heads or do we want to hold off until uh, the town budget night? We can hold off. Hold off? Okay, thank you. Uh, I now call for announcements and resolutions. Anyone with announcements and resolutions? I see a hand over here. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. John Gersh, Precinct 18. I would just like to acknowledge the select board and the town moderator for their efforts in moving the start of town meeting to today, Wednesday, uh, on behalf of those of us amongst us who uh, celebrate Passover. So thank you and much obliged. Great. I, mean, I mean, credit or, or blame really goes to the select board on that. Okay. Um, let's see. Any other announcements or resolutions? Mr. Diggins? Thank you, Mr. Moderator. So it's a little ironic to me that I think I have to do a complimentary um, resolution. Is that correct, Mr. Moderator? Uh, that is the thing you can do. Yep. So it's, I just talk, or do I have to introduce it in some special way? You can do an interpretive dance if you want. I don't know if that'll. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. You, you, you can speak to it. You don't. Yeah. You can I, speak I, to I'll it. Resist. So can we bring up that um, that PDF, yes. please? Yeah. Presentation computer, I think, has that. Well, anyways, I'll, I'll talk while we're bringing it up. I mean, essentially what I wanted to do was express my appreciation I mean, to all the town meeting members I mean, that uh, helped to get the reports I mean, to, the town meeting, uh, to the town meeting members. I mean, uh, a lot of times the organizer gets a lot of credit um, for these things, I mean, but the people who actually did the delivery I mean, are the ones who deserve the real credit. And so their names are up there, and hopefully we will get it on the website so you can see. But I mean, I mean, I can't express how much I appreciate the fact that uh, some people volunteered before I even asked, but those who I asked me uh, responded very quickly and very enthusiastically, and that's even more appreciated because um, I wasn't able to contact people on Monday as I had um, wanted to because of some um, unusual circumstances on that Monday, so I didn't get to them until Wednesday, uh, but still, I mean, they responded very quickly and got you all who wanted hard copies of the reports, uh, the reports. So once again, thank you to the 21 people who helped out. Thank you, Mr. Diggins. Do we have any other announcements or resolutions? Was there one in the front row? Mr. Borden? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Uh, John Worden, Precinct 8. I wanted to say a, a few words in memory of Corinne Rainville, who uh, was uh, mentioned uh, by the moderator a few minutes ago as the uh, uh, town uh, people who had, town officials who had unfortunately passed away during the past year. Um, uh, Mrs. Mrs. Rainville was the, the clerk from 1994 to uh, 2010. It, it just covered most of the period in which I had the honor of serving as the moderator in this, this meeting. And a little bit of a history lesson um, for the old town meeting members. Um, you'll remember, and the new town meeting members will say, gee, did they really do all that stuff? Um, 
But we, we didn't have any clickers. We didn't have any, well, we had a screen, but it was used very seldom. We didn't have votes being shown on the screen or anything like that. It was a, a more of a paper and words town meeting. And the, uh, the, 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 the town, uh, Mrs. Rainville, uh, when she was first elected in, in, uh, in 1994, uh, didn't need any on-the-job training because she had served in the clerk's office for many years uh, as one of, the, one of the assistants. In fact, one of her jobs was to sit in the back of the hall there where you got your clickers, but we didn't have any clickers, but she, you would give your name and she'd check you off on the list. Uh, and that's, that's the way we took attendance of who was at town meeting. And when we took votes, um, if, if, if it was a stand, well, we didn't have clickers, so if the voice vote was unclear or somebody challenged it, uh, we'd have a standing vote and we'd have a teller in each of the four sections and uh, they'd call out the numbers and she would write them down and I'd write them down and then we'd add them up and if we got the same total, we'd, I'd announce the vote. If we didn't, we'd go back and check our numbers. So we, we worked together on that sort of thing uh, uh, many, many times. And if we, had a, if we had a roll call vote, which happened very seldom, I mean, now we have a roll call on practically everything, but in those days we didn't. Uh, and if somebody challenged the, the standing vote with a roll call, and I'd read the roll and she'd write yes, no, or abstain, or absent, whatever. And uh, then we'd, we'd, she, and she'd add them up and I'd announce the total. So it was a, a, a different sort of a thing. But uh, Mrs. Rainville was a, a very kind and, and caring uh, person. And there's one, one, one story I think that illustrates this very well. Um, a, a, a person uh, uh, whom, whom I know, a friend of mine, um, was going to get married. He suddenly realized on the morning of the day that uh, uh, he forgot to get his marriage license. So he, he went to the, he called up Mrs. Rainville, and she came down here to town hall on Saturday, opened up, issued the license, and he was able to get to the church not only on time, but with the right piece of paper in his hand. So th that was just a characteristic of the kind of kind and wonderful person she was. And we, uh, we had a long and, and uh, happy relationship. And she often gave me a ride home after the meeting. And after the last meeting, we might stop at my house and have a glass of wine together and talk over what had gone over the, on the past however many nights. So I just wanted to say that, that uh, uh, she was a, a kind and exemplary town, uh, town clerk. And uh, she was just never afraid to go before the voters every three years. Uh, to get uh, reelected, which she was four, four or five times. So, and, and, and unhappily, and, and when she came out of retirement, um, and Stephanie Licarelli, our, the new who replaced her, uh, um, fell ill, she came back to, back, back, to, uh, uh, back to the clerk's office to help the remaining staff uh, get, get through the, uh, the, the, the rest of that, that year and, and through the election that followed. So I just, and, and, and as you probably, maybe most of you know, she retired to Vermont to live near her daughters and on a, her house caught on fire and, the, and she was killed in the fire. So that was a very sad ending to a, a person with a wonderful life. Thank you. All right, thank you, Mr. Warden. Do we have any other announcements or resolutions? Yeah, we have a hand. Ms. Sankalia? We saw someone checking out that uh, the, the timer uh, seems to not be displaying on the podium, so we're going to try to correct that. Um, uh, you, you can use one of the other podiums. Thank you. Uh, Priya Sankalia, Precinct 13, co-chair of Zero Waste Arlington. Um, I just wanted to remind town meeting members that we are in the middle of EcoFest, um, and all the, there are over 25 events which started on the 20th of April through May 11th. There's a ton of uh, activities and events, over 25, so do go to the town website and um, check out the events, and there's a lot of uh, Zero Waste events in there as well, but just general EcoFest events, so take a look at that. Thank you. All right, thank you. Any other announcements or resolutions? Okay, seeing none, uh, it takes us to Article 2. Article 1 was the town election that already happened. Article 2, uh, uh, Mr. DeCourcy. 
will offer the State of the Town Address. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Uh, good evening again, uh, town meeting members, elected and appointed officials, town employees and residents. I want to especially welcome the 22 newly elected town meeting members here this evening. It's an honor to stand before you tonight to present my second State of the Town Address from the Town Hall Auditorium. Three years ago, I recorded my remarks in an empty auditorium. It is so much better delivering the address directly to you this evening for our second in-person town meeting following the COVID pandemic. Before I begin, I want to recognize Select Board Administrator Ashley Marr and Acting Administrator this evening, Britton Mallard, for their work in the Select Board office. To thank Lauren Costa for her years of service to the Select Board and to wish her well in her new position as Budget Coordinator in the Town Manager's office and to thank Town Council Michael Cunningham and our new Deputy Town Council Jacqueline Munson for their role in drafting the Select Board report and comments. Ashley is not with us here tonight due to the death of her grandmother. We send condolences to her and her family. Over the past year, we have seen numerous changes in the senior management of our community. Last spring, my colleagues on the Select Board and I hired Jim Feeney as our town manager. Hiring a town manager is arguably the most important duty of a select board, and we couldn't be happier with the job Jim has done since he started last August. For those of you who have interacted with Jim since he began working for the town in 2011, you have no doubt seen his commitment to Arlington, his willingness to find solutions to challenges, and his demonstrated capacity to get things done. Jim and his management team have hit the ground running and we are fortunate to have such committed employees. We're also grateful for the outstanding service that all town and school employees provide to our residents. Over the past year, we have accomplished a great deal as a community. We remain encouraged to see the further completion of the new Arlington High School. Phase two opened last November and houses the humanities wing the Monotomy Preschool, the Central Administration offices, a new cafeteria, and a state-of-the-art library. The new gymnasium will be completed next February, and the final phase, with expanded new playing fields and a connection to the Minuteman Bikeway, will be completed in the fall of 2025. We remain grateful for the support of the town's taxpayers who approved the debt exclusion for the town's portion of the cost of construction in 2019. I also want to recognize the outstanding work of our AHS Building Committee. Several members are here tonight, including the Chair, Jeff Thielman, who reminded me today that the project remains on budget. Thank you, Jeff. <laughs> our new public works facility on Grove Street is nearing full completion, and we expect to op announce an open house for town residents to tour the facility later this year. In the meantime, the new Municipal Services Building has been in use over the past year by our DPW and Inspectional Service Departments. Arlington continues to be a leader in implementing climate change initiatives. We are one of only 10 communities across the state that will be moving forward with a fossil fuel-free building construction and renovation demonstration project in the coming years. Just recently, we entered a new contract for our Arlington Community Electricity Aggregation Program. As a result, Arlington will be the first community in Massachusetts to offer a 100% renewable energy default option for subscribers. <laughs> Significantly, the 100% renewables default option will cost less than the current default option which when combined with the state minimum is at 54% renewables. Arlington continued its commitment to affordable housing initiatives in 2023. As examples, through CDD, CDBG and CPA grants, the town is supporting the creation of 43 units of affordable housing on Sunnyside Avenue by the Housing Corporation of Arlington, providing continued funding for improvements to the Arlington Housing Authority properties at Drake Village and Monotomy Manor, and providing rental assistance grants for formerly homeless individuals who have secured rental housing in Arlington through the Somerville Homeless Coalition's Leasing Differential Program. For our senior citizens, 
The select board was pleased to approve a pilot parking program last summer that provides our seniors with free parking throughout town and in particular, the area surrounding the community center. More than 1,500 parking permits have been issued to date. In addition, through our voters' approval of a ballot question last fall, the town will be offering a local means-tested senior citizen property tax exemption next fiscal year. These are, about a, are but a few of the highlights from the last year. For a more comprehensive listing, I refer you to our 2023 annual town report, which is on the town's website and also available in hardcover at the back of the auditorium. Thanks in large part to our residents approving an operational override last November, town meeting will be presented with a balanced budget for fiscal year 2025. Moreover, the fiscal 25 budget will adhere to the override commitments the select board presented to voters last year. As I stand before you this evening, the state of our town is strong. Notwithstanding this, we face many challenges ahead. Although the budget is balanced, the Finance Committee report contains a five-year plan summary that shows sizable deficits beginning in fiscal year 2027. As town leaders, we must work together to minimize the projected deficits and make sound decisions for our community while also providing the best services possible to our residents. The work we perform over the next two years will be critical to address these challenges. In closing, town meeting will be asked to vote on 66 Warren articles in the regular town meeting and five additional articles in the special town meeting. It goes without saying that not every vote will be unanimous and that speakers will present different points of view in support of their recommended votes. That is the essence of our town meeting system. As we begin tonight, I am once again reminded of the words of our late select board member, Kevin Greeley. We can disagree without being disagreeable. As we have in the past, I hope we take these words to heart in our deliberations this year. Thank you very much. That clock is aggressive looking. Um, <laughs> we're still working out the details. Uh, that takes us to, that disposes of Article 2, and that takes us to Article 3, Reports of Committees. Uh, we'll now receive the reports of boards and committees. Uh, Mr. DeCourcy. Getting a little tired, Mr. Moderator. Uh, <laughs> I move that the report of the select board be received. Okay. Then we have a second. second. And all those in favor? The report of the select board is received. Okay. Do we have other reports? Uh, Ms. Deschler? Christine Deschler, Chair of the Arlington Finance Committee. Uh, Mr. Moderator, I move that the report of the Finance Committee be received. Okay. Do we have a second? All those in favor of receiving the Finance Committee report? Yes. All those opposed? And Ms. Deschler has a, a correction to announce. Uh, thank you, Mr. Moderator. Um, at the request of the Department of Revenue, um, the Finance Committee uh, voted tonight to um, uh, reword a, uh, two votes in our report, um, Articles 61 and 63. Uh, our vote um, on page 26 of the Finance Committee should read, there's no substantive change, but um, it should read that the sum of $750,000 be and hereby is appropriated to be transferred from overlay reserve surplus accounts of previous fiscal years, said sum to be utilized to reduce the tax rate. And Article 63, similarly, the vote should read that the sum of $8,941,000 $936 be taken from available funds in the Treasury and that the Board of Assessors is instructed to use said amount to reduce the tax rate. 
Again, these are non-substantive changes. It's purely uh, wording that the Department of Revenue ha has requested that we make. Thank you. Thank you. And Ms. Brazil, do we have these changes already posted? No. Oh, okay, so we'll, we'll get those up uh, uh, very soon. Uh, any other reports of committees? Uh, Ms. Emberg? Good evening, Rachel Zember, Chair of the Redevelopment Board. I respectfully submit the report of the Redevelopment Board to town meeting on behalf of the board. Do we have a second? Okay, all those uh, in favor? Yes. All those opposed? Uh, the report of the Redevelopment Board is received. Are there any other uh, reports of boards or committees? Seeing none, uh, Ms. Deschler? I move that the recommended votes contained in the respective reports of the Finance Committee, the Select Board, and the Redevelopment Board, and other committees be before the meeting without further, further motion. We have a second. And just to explain, especially to folks who are new, what that means is the recommended votes in these reports, which you should also see online in the annotated warrant, uh, but not with necessarily the, the latest up-to-date corrections, uh, the recommended votes in these reports, when articles come up that have those recommended votes, they'll be the main motion of those articles without us having to do extra gymnastics procedurally. All those in favor, say yes. yes. All those opposed? Okay, the uh, recommended votes contained in these reports will be f before the meeting without further motion. Mr. Moderator. Uh, Ms. Deschler? I move that Article 3 be laid upon the table. We have a second to lay Article 3 on the table. It means that we'll come back to it each night to get more reports if we have any. Uh, all those, uh, and we have a second. All those in favor of laying Article 3 on the table, say yes. yes. All those opposed? It is unanimous. Article 3 is now on the table. And that brings us to Article 4, um, appointment of measurer of wood and bark. Okay. Let's see. Do we have any nominations for measure of wooden bark? Mr. Fosco. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Charles Foskett, Precinct 10. Uh, I nominate uh, John Morton. Okay. We, okay, all those in favor of the nomination of uh, Mr. Warden, as the measurer of wooden bark, uh, say yes. yes. All those opposed? It is unanimous. Congratulations, Mr. Warden. Okay. okay, Article 4 is disposed of. That takes us to uh, Article 5, election of assistant town moderator. Um, and do we have any nominations for uh, assistant town moderator? Uh, Mr. Helmuth? Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Eric Helmuth, Precinct 12. I would recommend uh, nominate Adam Ouster. Okay. okay, we have a, a motion and a second uh, to nominate uh, Mr. Adam Oster, as, uh, who is our current assistant town moderator, to be the town, uh, assistant town moderator for this new session going forward. Uh, seeing no other nominations, uh, all those in favor of Mr. Oster being the uh, uh, elected the assistant town moderator say yes. yes. All those opposed? It is unanimous. Congratulations, Mr. Oster. Okay, that takes us to uh, Article 6. Oh, sorry, thank you, uh, Ms. Uh, Brazil, the uh, consent agenda. Uh, a lot of grumbling about the consent agenda. Okay, let's bring up the uh, noted. Uh, can we can we show the uh, the document for the consent agenda? And if we can make the uh, if we can zoom that or make the uh, the font as big as as we can. Yep, yeah, great. Thank you. So um, let me just explain a little bit here. The the version of the consent agenda that you saw in you, that you may have seen in your printed reports and in, in the uh, in the packets. Uh, are a very different format, and they're the articles are organized differently. Uh, just very briefly, the reason for that is that we didn't have the vote quanta like 
majority or two thirds for all the amendments. And we need that to organize the consent agenda into different categories because we take different votes on different segments essentially of the consent agenda based on the, 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 the quantum of vote, like you know, what the vote threshold is. Um, and so we didn't have that available at the time, so we broke it down by report, whereas the, what you see here presented here is organized uh, uh, by three sections. There'll be a, uh, the first section is the, uh, if we can scroll through as I say this, the majority vote consent agenda. Uh, and so these are all articles that are put on the consent agenda through recommendations of the chairs of boards or committees who reported on these articles with recommended votes. And uh, I'll explain the yellow highlighting in a second. Um, I'll, I'll come back to that. Um, and, uh, and so now there's an opportunity. I'll run through these article numbers one by one in each of these sections. And if you want an article to be taken off, oh, first of all, the consent agenda means that we will vote for each kind of block of articles with one vote that'll be applied to all the articles in that block. And if you don't want to treat a particular article, like say article nine, which is highlighted here, uh, you want it to be taken off so it can be debated and voted separately from the rest in the normal sequence of, of numbered articles, then you can, you can raise your hand and you can shout hold. And then I will, I will point to you and ask you to identify yourself so you can make sure that it's actually a town meeting member, identify your name and precinct number, make sure it's not uh, uh, someone uh, doing mischief from the, balcony, the, the side balconies. And so, um, uh, so let's now scroll down to the second block of the consent agenda, which is the, uh, the two thirds vote consent agenda. Can we scroll this down? Oh, uh, okay. Well, it, it, we're probably having a technical difficulty with the satellite room. Well, I can go on explaining. And so if we scroll down, you would see a very similar looking block of articles called the two thirds vote consent agenda, uh, which is a bunch of articles on the consent agenda that require two thirds vote. And then finally, uh, there's a smaller section of articles called the legislative consent agenda that we break out separately because there's some folks who are town meeting members uh, who do work with uh, uh, the state government, a state legislature, for instance, uh, and, uh, and so they have to recuse themselves from uh, uh, voting on any matter like, like uh, home rule petitions, uh, uh, articles of that nature. And so we break those out so, so those folks don't have to abstain from the entire consent agenda. Um, okay, uh, so are we, are we all set over there? Okay, so if we can just scroll down so you can get a view of what this will look like and we'll run through this uh, line by line, article by article, uh, and you'll have an opportunity as I call out the article numbers to shout hold, and I'll try to, and raise your hand or stand and I'll identify you and you can, and you can say your, your name and precinct number. And then we'll have that for the records of who held this. And I might have questions for you depending on the nature of the article. Uh, um, yeah, Mr. Wagner, do you have a point of order? Okay, if we can scroll to the top. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Uh, Carl Wagner, Precinct 15, point of order. Um, do we have an electronic link that those of us with computers can see this on or do we have paper in the audience that people sitting in the town meeting can use, or is this the only thing we have? This was created just before the meeting. Uh, I mean, I have a link. I don't know how I would get it. Yeah, the paper version of the packet is just not, it's not organized in this particular order. Okay, some yeah. people in the audience may not be able to see in the back what is on the screen. Yeah, so I'll, I'll recite the, uh, the, the article you. numbers. And so when I recite the article numbers, if you have a copy, your paper copy of your consent agenda, or the one that was published in the packet or a digital copy of that, um, you can still follow along with the article numbers so you know what articles I'm talking about. It just won't be presented in quite this visual format is all. Okay, and now there's the last point I'll make is that there are uh, uh, three articles that I've highlighted in yellow because uh, um, there, are, there are reasons why, or there are indications that folks are gonna wanna hold that article so I highlighted those so that we don't actually skip over those because folks did express intentions or there might be other things that I'm aware of that makes these articles actually not appropriate for the consent agenda. Uh, I'll just give an example of one, uh, Article 53, if we can scroll down to that. Uh, I wanted it to be town meetings business to take this off, so I didn't want to just unilaterally take it off myself and confuse everybody. Um, Article 53 was reported on by the Finance Committee and the Select Board. Uh, but it turns out only one of those uh, bodies actually has uh, the controlling 
uh, vote for the recommended vote under that article, and uh, the Finance Committee votes, uh, voted a $0 appropriation, which would make it appropriate typically for the consent agenda, uh, and that's how it ended up on here. Uh, but the select board uh, uh, is actually being authorized to take property by eminent domain, which is probably not something we want, you know, uh, 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 carried in the consent agenda, uh, because uh, it, that would be unfortunate if folks lost the opportunity to discuss that because they didn't realize that detail was in the consent agenda. Um, and so that, that's kind of a big deal. So I've highlighted the ones where I have reason to believe that there, there are compelling reasons to take this off and we don't want to accidentally leave them on um, is all. Um, okay, so now let's scroll to the top, to the majority vote consent agenda. And this, this is the largest section. So the, these are articles that require, their main motions require a majority vote of town meeting that's greater than 50% vote. Um, and so I'll run through these right now. So I'll recite the article numbers so you can look at your copies if you have them, uh, because the articles are, are more or less in sequential order, except for one exception uh, on, on this, uh, the consent agenda that was published in advance. Um, okay, so Article 9. Hold. Hold. Okay, that's a great example. So uh, can you identify? Uh, okay, so Mr. Moore is holding Article 9. Uh, Article 12. Article 13. Actually, and I'll, uh, I'll remove these as we go so they just disappear. There we go. Uh, Article 13. Article 18. Okay, we have a hold on 18. Article 34. Oh, I'm sorry, who, who held uh, Article 18? Uh, uh, Mr. Wagner? Mr. Wagner, I believe, Precinct 15, correct? Yep, thank you. Uh, yeah, so just uh, yeah, shout out hold and name and precinct, uh, and then we can get through it more quickly. Um, Article 34. Article 35. Okay. We have a hold by Mr. Leone on Article 35. Uh, Article 36. Hold. We have a hold. Name and precinct. Okay. Uh, Ms. Brazil, are you recording the, the holds? Thank you. Yep. Uh, Mr. Warden, you have a point of order? Okay, I, I can do that. Yep. Uh, let's see, that was, that was 36. Uh, Article 37, positions reclassification. Article 38, amendments to uh, fiscal year 20, 2024 budgets. Article 41, rescind prior borrowing authorizations. Article 46, appropriation committees and commissions. Article 47, Appropriation Town Celebrations and Events. Article 48, Appropriation Miscellaneous. Okay. Name and precinct? Thank you. Oops. Article 51, Appropriation Harry Barber Community Service Program. Article 52, Appropriation Pension Adjustment for Former 25-Year Accidental Disability Employees. Article 57, Appropriation Master Plan Update. Name and precinct? Okay, Mr. Warden, thank you. Article 58, Local Option Taxes. Article 59, Appropriation Other Post-Employment Benefits, OPEB, Trust Fund. Name and precinct? Thank you. So holding... Uh, 59. Uh, Article 60, transfer of funds, cemetery. Article 61, appropriation overlay reserve. Article 62, appropriation long-term stabilization fund. Article 63, use of free cash. Okay. Uh, so we're going to vote on these uh, block at a time, and then we'll, we'll move on to the others. Okay, so um, or I guess well, let's just do the holds first since we're already in, in that groove here. Uh, okay, so yeah, the two-thirds vote consent agenda. Uh, 
Article 25, see, these are articles that require two thirds vote, uh, and they're currently on the consent agenda. Uh, Article 25, zoning bylaw amendment building definitions. Oh. Name and precinct. I'm to Thank you. Article 26, zoning bylaw amendment administrative clarification. Oh. Name and precinct. I'm to okay. um, there's no bullet voting for the consent agenda, by the way. But, uh, Article 27, zoning bylaw amendment administrative correction. We'll get someone else to check. Okay, Mr. Revelak. Yeah. Oh, oh. So we'll give that, to Mr. Warden. Did you you wish to hold uh, Article 27, the administrative correction? Okay. So that's going. Okay. okay. Article 28, zoning bylaw amendment, del uh, delete inland wetland overlay district. Okay. So Mr. Revelak is holding Article 28. Uh, Article 32, Zoning Bylaw Amendment Traffic Visibility. Uh, name and pre like, we'll give someone else. Who, who's that back there? Na uh, okay, well, uh, who's the back? Name and precinct back there? Okay, did you catch that? No. Name again? Okay, thank you. Uh, uh, Article 43, appropriation financing of construction or reconstruction of sewers and sewerage facilities. Okay. Article 44, appropriation financing of construction or reconstruction of water mains and water facilities. Article 53, appropriation takings for, for Stratton School safe routes. Okay. Name and precinct? Mr. Moore. Thank you. Okay, and that takes us now to the legislative consent agenda, Article 19, uh, extend the time for artificial turf study committee and report. Article 21, home rule legislation to amend the senior citizen property tax exemption. Th these are both no action articles. Hold, uh, name and precinct, please. Okay, thank you. Okay. So we now have our consent agenda. And uh, I am gonna use my discretion as moderator to say that uh, Article 19, uh, well, we, we just won't take a vote on that. We'll just take that up in the normal order because there's no benefit to uh, the consent agenda for a single article uh, in, in, in a section. Yeah, uh, Mr. Warden. It's not on here. It's no longer on here. Yep. Okay. Uh, so yeah, if, if, we, if we leave one article on the, consent, on the legislative consent agenda, then it, we just have to take more votes anyway. Uh, yep, point of order. Uh, Jim DiTulio, Precinct 12, Mr. Moderator, I believe Article 19 was mistakenly put on the legislative consent agenda. It's not a home rule petition. I think it should be on the regular consent agenda, and therefore, I don't think you have to hold it. Oh, okay. So, that's, I mean, it can just be, we can take it in the group. Okay, the that, group that was vote. my mistake. Okay, thank you. So, I will take, uh, let me just verify. So, I believe that's, let me just, uh, let's say 19 is, thanks for that, clarif for that correction. Uh, and Article 19 is uh, majority vote. So, okay. It's 19. Okay. Okay. Fixed. Okay. And I'll pretend that wasn't there. Okay. Okay. And we'll scroll to the top and verify that Article 19 now appears in the majority vote consent agenda. Thank you for that, Mr. DiTulio. Uh, okay, so we'll now just kind of, now we, uh, the articles that are on the majority vote consent agenda are, I'm not gonna repeat all the names because we went through all that, but the, the numbers are, if you're, if you're keeping score uh, in your seat, is uh, Articles 12, 
13, 19, 34, 37, 38, 41, 46, 47, 51, 52, 58, 60, 61, 62, 63. Okay, so we will now, uh, we'll now take a vote on the majority vote consent agenda. So the vote now, if you vote one for yes, if you wish to vote for the, do you have a vote screen up? Yeah. Uh, if you wish to vote for the recommended vote of all the articles on the majority vote consent agenda that I just uh, enumerated, uh, vote one for yes, uh, vote two for no, if you want to vote down the recommended votes of those articles, uh, and uh, vote three to abstain. Okay, and voting is open when the green light is on, which is on. So this is specifically for the majority vote consent agenda. which has, by my count, 16, I believe, articles on it. Okay, voting is closed, it looks like. Can we show uh, the results? 208 in the affirmative, two in the negative, two abstentions. Uh, given that margin, uh, we don't need to scroll through screens. Let's now, uh, can we flip back to the two-thirds vote consent agenda? Sorry to keep switching views here. And there's two articles on this consent agenda. Uh, it's two finance committee article, fi the, the finance committee reported on articles 43, and Articles 44, these are appropriations uh, for uh, construction and reconstruction of sewers and sewerage facilities and water mains and water facilities. Uh, so let's now take a two-thirds vote on the two-thirds vote consent agenda for these two articles. Okay, and when the green light turns on, the voting will be active, okay? so. Press one for yes if you are in favor of the recommended votes from the Finance Committee report for Articles 43 and 44. Vote two for no or three to abstain. Do we have a timer for the, uh, for the vote screen? Okay. Is, is there one that we can show on there or no? Okay. We'll see if we can get that corrected uh, for next time. Okay, voting's closed. Can we show the vote screen? And the vote passes, 206 in the affirmative, and it is unanimous. Okay, so all those articles uh, that were remaining on the consent agenda are now disposed of. So that takes us now to... We have a point of order, Mr. Rosenthal. Mark Rosenthal, Precinct 14. Um, given the problem that I had with my clicker earlier, I, I had been hoping we would scroll through one of these uh, and look at the votes so that I could confirm that my vote was registered. Uh, what precinct are you? 14. 14. Can we bring up a screen with Precinct 14 on it? So, oh, it's too late. Uh, it's already cleared? Okay. Um, so we'll have to catch that next time. Apologies. Maybe on the next vote then. Yep. Okay. Um, Yep, point of order in the back. Vincent Boudouin, Precinct 1. Uh, Article 34, which was on the majority vote consent agenda, is a zoning bylaw amendment. I'd just like to verify that that can pass with the majority vote. Thank you. I see. Article 34, was that your point? Yeah, so that was listed as a majority vote. Um, uh, Mr. Cunningham, do you want to confirm that? I think I had that right. This is about residential uses. Michael Cunningham, Town Council. Yes, that is correct. The statute was changed in 2020. So certain zoning bylaws pertaining to housing are now subject to majority vote. So that was properly there. Great, thank you. Okay, that takes us to Article 6, uh, Bylaw Amendment, Vacant Storefront Maintenance Registry. Um, Mr. DeCourcy, uh, uh, do we have a point of order? Okay, point of order, Mr. Loretti, sorry. 
Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Crystal Reddy, Precinct 7. If you haven't already, can you clarify the working of these um, voting things? And in particular, if I press the wrong button, is there a way of undoing it? And the last vote, I think I might have voted prematurely, it said yes. Was that vote registered, or is it only registered when it says received? Uh, Jeff, can you confirm whether, like if, if, the, if the handset says received, does that mean that it necessarily uh, took the vote, or if it says yes? Yeah, can you, I'm sorry, can you come up to a microphone so everyone can hear? Hi folks, my name is Mike, I work with uh, Option Technologies. Um, when the voting period ends, that is your vote that is locked. So say you voted yes and then really meant to hit no, changed your mind. If you hit two, you know, you, you hit one first. If you then hit two, voting period ends, that will be your vote that is logged. Whatever your most recent press is when the 30-second voting period ends. Uh, can someone from OTI answer that? Yes. It has to say received. And so it has to say received for it to round trip through the. It has to say yes, no, or okay, so it has to say received to to be confirmed. Great, thank you. That's my understanding. Yep. Or that it hasn't confirmed that it's been received. Uh, distributed systems are a very hard problem. Um, uh, yeah, yeah, but we'll scroll through on the next vote to, to confirm. Uh, okay, I'm sorry, Mr. DeCourcy, go ahead. Uh, can you introduce uh, Article 6, please? Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Um, Steve DeCourcy, Select Board. The board recommended favorable action by unanimous vote on various amendments to the vacant storefront maintenance registry. Our economic development coordinator, Katie Lasai, will be presenting the changes uh, to town meeting. Great. Thank you. Okay. Can we show and... Oh, okay. So we have a presentation. Go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. My name is Katie Lusai, and I'm the Economic Development Coordinator for the Town of Arlington. Thank you for sharing the sides regarding Article 6. As a part of my job, it is my responsibility to enforce the vacant storefront bylaw. The following presentation will summarize the request to amend Article 17, the vacant storefront maintenance registry, for reasons of bylaw clarification and to remove the public art waiver option. Next slide, please. First, I will provide some background information on the bylaw. The registration and maintenance of vacant commercial and industrial buildings bylaw was approved by a vote of special town meeting on October 19th, 2016. The intention of the bylaw is to promote the town's public welfare and economic health by requiring all property owners to register and properly maintain vacant commercial and industrial properties. Our bylaw has served as a model for many other communities and I am regularly contacted by other towns who ask about our experience using this policy tool in combating storefront vacancies. Following the implementation of the bylaw, our commercial vacancy rates have decreased significantly. Compared to our neighboring communities, vacancy rate remains relatively low at around 8.6% for our regional submarket. This compares to our neighboring regional submarket of West Cambridge slash Alewife, who has a commercial vacancy rate of 19.2%. Despite our relatively low vacancies, our business districts take great pride in running businesses in active, vibrant communities, and are hurt when our neighboring storefronts remain empty and neglected. Since enforcing the bylaw once again, it has become clear that a few adjustments should be made to clarify the language and intention for the desired goals. Next slide, please. I'm sorry, I can you slow down a little bit? Oh, yeah. I can't. More than 25% of the current vacant storefronts are office spaces located on second stories of buildings. Given the current state of work in 2024, it is less productive to target those types of spaces for policy intervention. 
Amending this language will rectify confusing notions around the storefronts aspects of the vacant storefronts bylaw and reassert those efforts around the town's main commercial corridors. The proposed bylaw amendment would focus the scope of the vacant storefront bylaw to only apply to ground floor units with frontage along Mass Ave or Broadway. Reducing enforcement workload will additionally allow more focused efforts on filling vacant storefronts in higher foot traffic commercial corridors and other economic development initiatives. Next slide, please. Secondly, after speaking extensively with the Arlington Commission for Arts and Culture, we have decided to propose removing the public art waiver from the bylaw. The waiver is currently not serving the purpose of providing public art as a public good to offset, to offset alternatively paying a fee. Though well-intentioned, it was a difficult program to manage. Other communities, such as Cambridge, have solely focused on generating public art in vacant storefronts which, with great success. Without the funding for a formal curatorial program or the ability to pay artists via the vacant storefront bylaw fee, there is no financial incentive to support this option. Nor does ACAC, the Arlington Commission for Arts and Culture, have the bandwidth or desire to volunteer their time to provide their expertise to curate art for these property owners seeking fee waivers. Next slide, please. Oh, sorry, next slide. Thank you for your time and consideration. Um, additionally, regarding the upcoming amendment uh, to be brought forth by Mr. Benson, uh, we do not object. Thank you. Great, thank you. Uh, something I should have done ahead of time, and I'll try to remember to do this uh, on subsequent articles, is that I'll show the speaker queue empty as it's opened up, and so everyone could see the initial rush of speakers, if there is a rush of speakers. Uh, and then we'll go to presentations. Uh, I don't think, I don't know if we were seeing that on the display at the time. Can we switch, switch over to the speaker queue now? Um, okay. And so, um, actually, I'm not even sure. Let's say the time stamps on these are pretty old. Yeah, I, we're just gonna, we're gonna reset the speaker queue here because I think like folks, we're probably not aware when it, because I wasn't even aware when, when exactly it opened up. So, okay, it is now open. So you can click in now if you want to speak on Article 6. Okay. Oh, did it get reset again? Or people might, if, if, you're, if you keep clicking it over and over, you're going to end up on and off the screen. Okay. Like, we're, we're not resetting the queue, right? Okay, so this is just, like, multiple clicks, probably. Yes. Um, okay, we have one speaker, Mr. Fisher. Oh, I'm sorry, we, we did have, it worked. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry, we have Mr. Benson that I want to introduce. Sorry about that, Mr. Benson, who wanted to introduce, uh, let's see, an amendment, yes. And can we bring up Mr. Benson's an amendment? Uh, thank you, Mr. Moderator. Uh, Eugene Benson, Precinct 10. Good evening, town meeting. I thought this was an excellent warrant article, but in looking at it, I realized that they missed a few storefronts that are right off Mass Ave and right off Broadway, specifically those on Lake Street, Medford Street, Mill Street, and Park Avenue. I'll just give a couple examples. I was at the Regent Theater the other night. I hope all of you go very often. And uh, there are a lot of storefronts next to it, across the street from it, just off Mass Ave seemed to me they were as important as the ones on Mass Ave and Broadway to be subject to this. Uh, similarly, um, another example, at the corner of Lake Street and Mass Ave, there are a bunch of storefronts, and that building is scheduled to come down, but when the new one comes up, there will be a storefront facing Lake Street. So I thought these four streets should be added because they're sort of right around the corner and they're just as appropriate to have the vacant storefronts apply to them. The other one amendment is just to make explicit the requirement that the advertising materials at a vacant storefront must comply with the usual signage um, requirements in the zoning bylaw that all the occupied storefronts have. So thank you very much. Uh, Ms. Benson, can you actually make your motion? Oh, so yes, I, I move to amend um, Article 6, as indicated. Second. Okay, we have a second. Um, okay, and so now we'll switch over to the uh, speaker queue. 
And uh, Mr. Fisher, you already passed, correct? Uh, Mr. Loretti? Thank you, Mr. Water, uh, Chris Loretti, Precinct 7. I had, just have a couple of questions. Um, in the text of the change, it talks about financial hardship, and it talks about a showing of demonstrable undue economic hardship um, through presentation of evidence in such form as may be convincing and acceptable to applicable town officials. So I guess my question is, what constitutes demonstrable economic hardship or undue economic hardship and who are the applicable town officials? Great. Um, uh, Mr. Cunningham, do you want, do you want to take a, a crack at that or does any, anyone else want to address that? Mr. Feeney? Mr. Cunningham? Michael Cunningham, Town Council, I think as Mr. Loretti points out, there is some subjectivity to that. It would probably be case-by-case -case analysis based on that language. However, the, the appropriate town officials, I'm not aware. I'd have to check on that. Thank you. Um, one other question, and this was partially addressed by uh, Mr. Benson's amendment, and that has to do with, with advertising. Um, I believe Mr. Benson said that the advertising would have to comply with the current regulations in the zoning bylaw, but the current I'm sorry, Mr. Wright, can you speak more to the microphone? Yeah. Sorry, yeah. the current regulations in the zoning bylaw limit uh, advertising to advertising a business on site. You cannot put a billboard on your store for a completely different business. Now we're talking about vacant storefronts, so I'm I'm wondering just what type of advertising would be acceptable, you know, aside from a for rent or for sale sign, and in particular, you know, is it contemplated that the property owner will be able to effectively have billboards on these buildings to raise revenue or some other non-accessory advertising or just what type of advertising would be acceptable? I don't know the answer to that. Uh, Mr. Feeney, um, do you or do you know someone who would be able to answer that? Sounds like we don't have anyone who can. Uh, uh, Mr. Benson? Thank you, Eugene Benson, Precinct 10. As you noted, um, Mr. Loretti, the um, current zoning bylaw says if you have a vacant building, you can't have the sign for the previous tenant, etc. You could, of course, have for rent, for lease, for sale but it would have to be a certain size because the zoning bylaw mandates size and the window coverage. So, so under your, your understanding is that that's the only type of signage that would be allowed? That's my understanding. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Thank you, Mr. Loretti. Um, Mr. Hamlin? Hello, uh, Guillermo Hamlin, Precinct 14. I move to terminate debate in all matters before it. We have a, okay, we have a motion to terminate debate and we have a second. All those, and so this requires a two-thirds uh, two vote. All those in favor of terminating debate on Article 6 and all matters before it, say yes. Yes. All those opposed? No. The motion carries, debate is terminated. So let's now, um, uh, so there's a lot of detail here. So let's, um, let's for, we're first gonna vote on the amendment, the Mr. Benson's amendment to the select board's recommended vote. And then we'll vote on the main motion, which may be amended or not. But I wanna show in reverse order, because I think that'll make more sense in context. If we can, if we can bring up, we're not gonna vote on it just yet. I wanna make sure, because it's complicated, I wanna make sure everyone knows what they're voting on. Can we bring up, uh, and we'll just kind of quickly scan through uh, the, um, uh, the select board's uh, recommended vote language for Article 6 on the display. Can we bring that up? Okay. Right, so this bolded part at top is just kind of the preface of what's, a description of what's gonna, what's being amended in the, uh, the town's bylaws. Uh, and then following that is like, 
so that Article 17 is a little confusing. This is Article 6 of the annual town meeting warrant, but it's amending Article 17 of the town bylaws in Title 5. Um, okay, so the part where it says Title 5 fee, Article 17, like that's how it would appear in the town bylaws. So let's now slowly scroll through this and we can see what's being changed here. Uh, so any additions will have underlines and any deletions will have strikeouts. And so we're adding with frontage along Massachusetts Avenue, Broadway, or both. This is the select board's recommended vote. Uh, and then adding this financial hardship section that Mr. Loretta was asking about earlier. Let's scroll down. Keep going. And then we have a strikeout of a paragraph related to public art. So that would be removed from the town bylaws in this section. And then adding a main, store for, uh, main street storefront uh, paragraph. Um, and then striking the word building from vacant building. Definitely, this is still part of the definitions in the bylaw. Uh, let's scroll down. Yeah, we have a point of order in the back. We're reviewing this in reverse order because I think to provide context of what the select what the select board was seeking to amend to the bylaws, and then we'll, we'll, we'll look at Mr. Benson's in context of that. But we're, not, we're gonna vote in the reverse order. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, so in section three, registration, there's a, a number of changes in here. Um, I'm not gonna read everything, but you can see the strikeout of a unit or any portion of a property, and replacing that with Main Street storefront. And you can see similar changes throughout. Um, there's some changes in capitalization of vacant, um, uh, fixing up some grammar, uh, and then there's adding or leased or disposed of in another legal manner. Um, let's scroll down, the smaller paragraph, uh, more of the same. Um, scroll down, section four, more of the same. And, there's, and then there's a new section here in that paragraph, at section A, or disposed of in another legal manner like we saw before. Okay, uh, and then section B, or item B, replacing building with uh, vacant Main Street storefront. We're not gonna go through this level of detail all the time, it's just there's a lot in here. Uh, item C, uh, number of changes in here. Uh, let, let's hold up on this, because this is a little bit different than the others. Um, so th this is, uh, edit, it, it's striking out waivers for public art, which aligns with striking the definition and the definition section. Uh, let's see, we're uh, specifying a, um, it looks like a 30 day, uh, see that's new, the 30 is new, is that right? The 30 day review period. Um, let's see, okay, let's scroll down. And let's scroll down further. And okay, this is more of the same, we've seen this, these same patterns before, it's just being applied through more, more items here, let's scroll down. Uh, yeah, and there's also like beyond such temporary measure is being added, which is a little different than the others. Um, and changing uh, some of the language there about uh, of the entirety of the building being explicit. Let's scroll down. I think we're almost done. Uh, more of the same, more of the same. Okay, let's scroll down. And let's see, and then here, uh, a fine of $100. Um, let's see, I don't remember if the $100 was in the original bylaws as a number. It, it was 100 it was just a number, but okay, so now we're actually, we're just spelling out the numbers, it looks like. Okay, so that's um, not particularly interesting. Okay, let's keep going, keep going, keep going, and, and that's, that's it. Okay, so that's the select board's recommended vote to amend the town bylaws. Uh, so now let's bring up the Benson Amendment so we can see that change now that you've memorized all those changes to the select board's, uh, through the select board's recommended vote. Uh, what Mr. Benson wants to change here, let's scroll down um, so yes, the, stand, like the, the description here is that there's, uh, uh, we're adding Lake Street, Medford Street, Mill Street, and Park Avenue to the streets uh, to which the bylaw applies, uh, as opposed to just Mass Ave and Broadway, right? Um, this is an addition to those, right? And let's see, in, sec in section two, it's leading the word main from the definition. Yeah, so there's some like uh, messing with the words here, uh, but also applying these additional streets uh, to which uh, the amendment would apply. Um, and more of that. Uh, there's some adjustment of the word vacant. 
uh, or there's actually, there's a, there's a typo in there, vacant appears twice. I think we'd probably just correct that administratively after the fact anyway, I think. Um, and let's see, and then adding a missing article. Yeah, it's just a typo, and that's something we, 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 can, we can address offline anyway. Um, and so let's scroll down and see what this changes. So you can see in context here. So this is relative to not the town bylaws as they exist now, but relative to the select board's recommended vote, right? And so, um, right, you can see where it's adding the additional streets, streets, Lake Street, Medford Street, Mill Street, and Park Ave. Let's scroll down. Um, more of the same. Uh, dropping the word main from street storefront. Um, more of the same. We can scroll down. More of the same. More of the same. And keep going. Keep going. Uh, and then here, uh, there's one added part here in, in item D. And must comply, thank you, uh, and must comply with the signage requirements of the zoning bylaw to make that explicit. Uh, because that may be ambiguous otherwise, I believe, is, is Mr. Benden, uh, Benson's assertion. Point of order? Point of order? Yeah, come to the microphone, please. Barry Jaspin, uh, Precinct 18. I, I think I saw a typo in the proposed changes. Could you scroll up to 4C? This, C, oh, this is 5C. Section 4, Let's go yep. up to 4. Vacant street storefront may apply. That doesn't sound right. An owner of? Vacant street storefront may apply? I, that oh, that the, whether the storefront can apply or not? Um, well, debate's closed. Uh, so um, I think that's what we would have to go forward with at this point. So, um, and, uh, and Mr. Cunningham's not waving his hand, so I, I think we're going to be OK. Um, OK, so, so now we're going to vote on Mr. Benson's amendment, which is the more recent one that we looked at. Uh, and so. Um, if you're in favor of Mr. Benson's amendment to the recommended vote of the select board, then you would vote that in the affirmative vote that yes. So let's open a vote now on Mr. Benson's amendment, which we're going to vote first. Okay. Voting is now open on the Benson amendment uh, under Article 6. If you're in favor of Mr. Benson's amendment to the select board's recommended vote, vote yes. If, you're, if you want to keep the select board's vote intact, press 2 for no to not amend it, or three to abstain. Let's keep voting open, and five, just for a few more seconds. Okay, five seconds, four, three, two, one. Voting is closed. And Mr. Benson's amendment passes. Uh, 210 in the affirmative, 10 in, uh, in the negative, and one abstention. Uh, so the main motion before us now is uh, the recommended vote of the select board as amended by Mr. Benson's amendment. Um, so let's now take a vote on the main motion as amended. Moderator, yep. Uh, Brian, you, you want to scroll oh yeah, let's scroll through that since a, a couple of folks at least had some, some issues. Um, so we'll, we'll scroll, scroll through the screens relatively quickly and then we'll move on to uh, voting on the main motion as amended. And thanks for bearing with, I know there were a lot of changes in that one. Okay, this is the last screen. And then we'll go to a vote on the main motion as amended by the Benson Amendment. And then we'll take a break after that. Okay, can we um, switch over to a voting screen on the main motion?
Okay, voting is now open. If you're in favor of the main motion as amended by the Benson Amendment, uh, you can vote one for yes. If you're opposed, vote two for no, or three to, to abstain. And this is a majority vote. Okay, voting is closed. Uh, and the motion passes. 215 in the affirmative, five in the negative. Uh, we're not gonna run through the screens again. And at this point, uh, we will take a 10 minute, and I'm gonna hold us strictly to it, a 10 minute uh, recess. ACMI productions are only made possible with your support. Visit patreon.com slash ACMI to learn how you can help. Okay, so we are now taking up Article 7. Uh, Mr. DeCourcy, do you want to introduce this, please? Uh, quiet. Uh, Mr. DeCourcy, you want to introduce uh, Article 7 for us, please? Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Steve DeCourcy, Select Board Chair. Um, the Select Board moved favorable action on various amendments to the repair to private ways uh, bylaw. Uh, Mr. Feeney, our town manager, will present the changes to the meeting. Okay. And, uh, and can we switch over just briefly to the speaker queue and uh, clear it so everyone can see if their requests are showing up? Uh, can, we, can we clear the speaker queue, please? Okay, you can now, you can now request to speak. Okay, uh, Mr. Feeney, it's all yours. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. So with respect to Article 7, in recent years, we have seen a steady increase in the number of private way betterment projects coming forward. Uh, microphone, please. Thank you. In recent years, we have seen an increase in the number of private way betterment projects coming forward. Uh, for many years, the town saw between zero and one projects annually. Uh, however, in 2021 and 2022, uh, eight total projects were completed. Uh, the changes proposed under this article seek to address challenges experienced during these recent projects with an eye towards modernizing the process. So the first change seeks to make it simpler and frankly more likely that a single road or a small group of roads within a much, liver, much larger private roadway association are able to proceed with repaving their own streets. As currently constructed, the bylaw requires abutters of the private ways, private way or ways in question to petition and ultimately get two-thirds approval from all of the abutters within the established association, which can be preventative when there are hundreds of households involved. It would remain the case, though, that only the abutters of the private way being paved would be subject to a special assessment. So this proposed change seeks to make it clear that only those directly impacted by the betterment will have a vote on the betterment. The next change seeks to increase the deposit requirement from 33% down to 50% down. The increased deposit requirement aims to guarantee additional cash flow into the private way repair fund so that additional projects may be approved each construction season. This is important since there are a growing list of projects in the pipeline. And I will note that for the last 11 projects completed since 2020, the average upfront collection rate has been 81%, which means that many abutters pay in full to avoid paying interest or to impact their escrow. However, since the collections are largely received following project completion, the existing funds in the private way repair fund are tied up for any ongoing projects is we need to maintain enough money to cover any final invoices. 
So by the time final payments are received, sometimes months after project completion, other projects were not able to proceed in that current construction season due to insufficient funds. This can drive up the cost of the project with year-over-year -year inflation and require rebidding the following construction season for other residents already in the pipeline. So these cash flow issues have ultimately resulted in the town having to require a threshold down payment well above one-thirds be received in order to proceed right away. Otherwise, projects have to wait for sufficient funding to be available. Now, at the same time, this amendment also seeks to remove the deposit requirement entirely for a project that will seek or require a borrowing as the subsequent payments can be legally accounted for separately to pay for debt service and do not return to the town's general fund. And then the final proposed change would allow for an electronic petition to streamline the process of neighborhood voting, hopefully reducing both the legwork and time frame required to complete this process, as it is quite burdensome for uh, the, the neighborhood proponents who decide to take this on. Thank you for considering. Thank you, Mr. Feeney. Uh, we'll now go to the speaker queue, and uh, Ms. Freeman, why don't you lead us off? Uh, Beth Ann Friedman, Precinct 15. I have a number of questions concerning um, which of the neighbors need to pay and what percentage. Um, if two thirds of the neighbors uh, sign a petition, do all of the uh, all of the neighbor the butters committed to pay, and is it equally or is it based on uh, the frontage? Because if you're on a private way, you actually own to the middle of the street. Um, in front of your property, or is it a percentage, if it's a cul-de-sac, is it a percentage in terms of how far down the cul-de-sac you are, you know, if you're going to uh, benefit more than somebody at the very end? So how does that work? Mr. Feeney, is there an algorithm? <laughs> a lot of questions. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. So the, uh, it is an equal apportionment for each butter, a butter to the private way. Okay. Thank you. Great, thank you. Uh, let's take uh, Dr. Allison Ampey next. Thank you, Kiersey Allison Ampey, uh, Precinct 13. Um, I'm speaking to, I'm rising against this amendment or against this motion article. Um, first, I think the increased number of Paving, the increased number of projects is predictable because of the timing of the initial paving. Um, private ways in the town do not see any additional benefit from being a private way except maybe the parking, but that's really kind of iffy. Um, and so people who are on private ways are forced to pay for this, which is otherwise a provided service by the town. Um, we just went through this with my street last year, so we were one of these people who are one of the many projects that you saw. Um, I feel the 50% deposit, requiring a 50% deposit is harmful for people who are of low income. We actually had a couple of people on our street who wouldn't have been able to do it if the rest of us hadn't pitched in and paid for their second lots. They could handle one share, but they had, they actually had two share, they had two lots, and so they would have had two shares. And they wouldn't have been able to afford it. We could have still put it through because of the number of, of um, people, but we didn't want to put them into that. But I think having a 50% deposit is too much for some people, and uh, it's not fair for people who are low incomes. So thank you. Thank you. Mr. Jameson? And just to remind folks, there is a, uh, there's a tablet on the center platform with uh, the, speaking, uh, the, 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 remain, the, the elapsed speaking, or the remaining speaking time. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Gordon Jameson, Precinct 12. A very large tablet with, to tell you what's up. Now it's upside down. Oh, well. Um, <laughs> you can see it, but I can't. Um, so, um, do you have comments I, about I, the article? I, yes, yes, I do, Mr. Moderator. Um, I'm in favor of this because I, anything that, that takes the, the sections of roads that are um, private ways 
and that goes historically back to the builders that set up those roads and did not build them up to town standards so, that, so they could be accepted. So that's a, unfortunately a legacy from the builders that originally set out those areas as I understand it. There are, there are several roads that I travel on occasionally, um, one just a block and a half over, which are um, in horrible shape. And my first question is, does the town have any way of making them at least um, make it so it's level? Um, because it's gonna, the town plows those roads even though they're not really paved in the winter and it downs, I'm sure damages town and contractors, um, uh, trucks and things. Can there's any way we can force people to make a road passable? Uh, Mr. Feeney, I'm, I'm, Mr. Feeney, why don't you take this while I contemplate whether this is within scope? Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Jim Feeney, town manager. Uh, there is a provision in the private way uh, repair act that would allow for the town to make emergency repairs if deemed necessary by the director of the Department of Public Works because we feel that largely because either emergency vehicles would not be able to access a road or that our own equipment may be severely damaged by traversing a road. Thank you, Thank you Mr. Feeney. Um, in reference to the 50% um, that the previous speaker talked, it says that a deposit of 50% is of the total cost is required. It doesn't say 50% um, by each, um, this is my interpretation, it's not 50% of each um, participant. Is that correct or incorrect, Mr. Cunningham, Mr. Feeney? perhaps? Thank you, Mr. Moderator, Jim Feeney, town manager. That is indeed correct. Many abutters will often pay nothing and it just gets assessed onto their taxes over the course of five years. So it is an aggregated deposit. Many can pay more. Okay, and lastly, I see in Article 54 that we are, I didn't know what the actual language is. We're, we're putting money into this revolving fund. Is that to help uh, the cash flow issue? Uh, that's in scope of Article 54, but not Article Seven. We were we were just told that uh, getting more ca the cash flow was an issue here. I just wanted to know if the if that's being helped by Article Fifty Four, yes or no. Okay. Uh, to the extent that that impacts decisions on Article Seven, Mr. Feeney. Thank you, Mr. Moderator, Jim Feeney, Town Manager. Yes, Article Fifty Four seeks to reseed the private way uh, repair fund with a hundred thousand dollars. Thank you very much, Mr. Moderator, and for the responses by others. I will be voting in favor of this. All right, thank you. Uh, we'll take Mr. Greenspawn next. Andrew Green, uh, Greenspawn, Precinct 5, uh, I move the question. Okay, we have, we have a motion to terminate debate. Um, uh, we have a second from Mr. Moore. All those in favor of terminating debate uh, on Article 7 and all matters before it, say yes. Yes. All those opposed, say no. no. It does not carry. Uh, so, okay, we have one standing. If we have five people standing, we'll take an electronic vote. We have five people standing, we'll take an electronic vote on termination of debate. This is a two-thirds vote. Uh, are we not display? Oh. Can we show the speaker cube briefly? But then we'll switch over to voting. And when we vote, we'll retain the speaker cube if we have to go back, correct? Yeah. Okay. Okay, let's switch to a voting screen for termination of debate. Okay. Also called call the question or the previous question. It goes by many names, but it has one effect, which is to terminate debate. If you're in favor of terminating debate, uh, press one for yes. If you want to continue debate, press two for no. No to not terminate debate, but to continue. And three to abstain. And this is a, a two thirds vote. We'll try to get the, the countdown timer uh, in the future. 
Okay, and uh, it passes, 136 in the affirmative and 74 in the negative and two abstentions. No, is, 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 is this marked as a, as a two thirds? Yeah, that's not two thirds, that's not two thirds. Uh, okay, well doing the math and ignoring the green uh, pass label in the corner, uh, the, the motion does not carry, which is about the numbers that I was hearing up here. Okay, so we'll go back to the speaker queue, and um, let's see, that was Mr. Greenspawn. We'll take uh, Mr. Stephen Moore. If we can get that corrected in the future, we get the two-thirds vote for, the, for calling the question. Thank you. Yep, Mr. Moore. Uh, thank you, Mr. Moderator. Steve Moore, Precinct 18. Um, I'm rising to uh, state my favor for this uh, article. I have a um, serious involvement with private ways over the many years. I was one of the proponents and organizers of my own street many years ago. It was a difficult process, involved a lot of my time personally. The changes being proposed here would uh, streamline the process and improve it, I think, dramatically. I understand the, about the financial issue that was spoken to earlier, and I realize it can represent a bit of an increased burden for some, but so many streets that are private ways in this town are in bad shape. I think we need to take some drastic action to improve some of those areas. That's just certainly my personal feeling. One of the issues that happened was back when Proposition 2 and a half passed many years ago in the 80s, um, the towns all stopped accepting private ways as public streets and improving them. And Arlington, unfortunately, was left with the situation it is because they had so many private ways that hadn't yet been accepted. So this is a step in the right direction. Thank you. Thank you. Let's take uh, the other Mr. Moore next. Mr. Christopher Moore. Uh, pass. pass. Okay. Uh, but I was unable to remove myself, just to know. Okay. Good to know. Thank you. Um, uh, we'll take Mr. Fisher. Mr. Pye Fisher next. Pass. pass. Uh, Mr. Newton. Pass. Uh, Mr. Hamlin. Uh, Mr. Helmuth. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Eric Helmuth, Precinct 12 member of the Select Board. Um, I also happen to be on uh, the board of our local road maintenance association in the Tower uh, Heights area, which is, is large, and some of the experience that the association had uh, was, the, was the impetus for some of the uh, other changes other than the, the uh, one half uh, deposit. And I just want to say that not only for the roads in my neighborhood um, projects, but others, we really need these other changes in order to be able to get some projects done. We ran into a couple of major roadblocks, so to speak. Um, so I would hope that if the meeting is concerned about the, the one half, that we might accomplish that with an amendment, which might require an, an action at a later time. But it would be really unfortunate to lose, uh, to throw the baby out with that particular uh, bathwater. With regard to the one half deposit, this is something the select board spent a lot of time talking about, and it's a, it's a tough call. What persuaded me, and, and originally the, the proposal was to even go higher for, for two thirds, and I understand the rationale. I mean, the town manager and, and his team are responsible for planning and for cash flow and for accounting, and this is tricky. And it's tricky when you don't know exactly what's, what's happening and you have to respond on the fly. So it's much easier and much better, and ultimately provides better service for the town if there's predictability. But the board was concerned enough about the sort of the optics and also the impact of two thirds that we decided to reduce it in our recommendation to, to one half. But here's the important part, point. One half or more is what's happening anyway and what's going to continue happening. I think we were very persuaded by the town manager's numbers that he gave to us about the continuing uh, increase that I, I don't believe is temporary. And these projects are costing more and more. The need is, is there, just go out and look at the roads. Um, and so what's really happening anyway is that the whole uh, project is gonna require at least a half deposit or it just won't happen, or it won't happen for a very long time and then the costs go up, as the town manager said. Um, so the other, so, but in practice, as I said before, it's very much more helpful for planning and for budgeting to have that requirement in the beginning because then neighborhoods know what they're getting into, it streamlines the process. The final thing I'll say is just to reiterate a point that, uh, was, that was brought up earlier. Uh, appearances notwithstanding, 
um, the one half, if we do that, uh, deposit is not per person. Some people can pay nothing. We actually are seeing this happening now. Some people pay nothing, some people pay a lot more than, than the one third that's currently on the books. It's made up for by your neighbors. That's often how it's working in practice. So it will require a change when those of us involved with projects go to our neighbors. We have to explain that very, very carefully. But I was persuaded that the burden is, is not that great in practice for most people. Thank you. Thank you. I'll take uh, Mr. Foskett next. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Charles Foskett, <clears throat> Precinct 10. Um, I have a question that I would like, or a clarification I would like to get, and that is with this 50% uh, deposit, what happens when the town is principal a butter and the traffic on the private way is principally to um, use town services? Does uh, the town contribute to that 50%? Mr. Feeney? Or Mr. Cunningham, either of you can address this. Thank you for that question, uh, Jim Feeney, town manager. I am not aware of the town having had to contribute a share as an abutter. I'm not certain if the bylaw excludes us or we just haven't experienced that situation yet. Well, I'm asking about the future, not the past. In other words, what's the principle? If the town is the principle of abutter, if there's, you know, uh, if let's just, let me say hypothetically, 60% of the land abutting the private way is town land, does the town contribute to that private way improvement? The percentage of frontage or abutment, if you will, would not matter. We would be, if the bylaw allows for it, we would pay our equalized share as an abutter. So what does the bylaw say? Uh, I, I would have to look more closely to see if it exempts the town from uh, paying as part of a private way betterment. I see Mr. Cunningham shaking his head. Mr. Cunningham, does that mean that? Uh, I, I read the bylaw, I don't think it does, okay. but I'm, I would like an opinion of town council, please. I'm sorry, Mr. Foskett. Michael Cunningham, town council. I'm sorry, what did you say there, Mr. Foskett? I said, I, I have read the bylaw. I don't think the town is exempt, but um, I would like to understand the opinion of council. Uh, thank you again, Michael Cunningham, Town Council. Yeah, I, I don't, I've looked at the bylaw. There is no specific exemption for the town from paying. I don't typically, typically that's not how it works in municipalities. I'm, the town does not contribute a share when it isn't a butter on a private way. Um, but I'd have to look for the statutory site on that. I, do, I just know that in practice, that's not how it's done. There, there is reference in the bylaw to traffic on private ways generated by, uh, let me say, public service or access to public services. So, I mean, I can envision a situation where the, the road damage is caused not by abutters, but by, or services to abutters, but by the public using the private way to reach town services. Mr. Cunningham? Yes, I can envision the same scenario, Mr. Fosca, but I just think pursuant to government exclusions for this type of funding, there would be no contribution from, typically, from municipalities. Thank you. Thank you. Um, let's take uh, Ms. Roderick next. Pass. Pass. Uh, Ms. Farrell. Pass. Uh, Ms. Preston. Okay. Um, uh, Mr. Hanlon. Uh, I pass or I'll pass again. Okay. Uh, Mr. Holland. We have a taker. Okay. Uh, yeah, there was a Mr. Hanlon, Mr. Patrick Hanlon. Yeah, he passed, right? Um, and then we went to Mr. Holland. Yeah. Rod Holland, Precinct 7, I call the question again. Okay. We have a motion to terminate debate. We have a second. All those in favor of terminate, terminating debate on Article 7, say yes. Yes. All those opposed, say no. no. Motion carries by quite a bit. Okay, so debate is terminated. Uh, so 
we are now taking, so uh, we already covered this in great detail, so I'm not going to go through in excruciating detail like we did on the prior article. Uh, let's bring up a vote screen for the main motion of uh, Article 7. So we're voting on the main motion as recommended by uh, the select board. If you're in favor of, uh, I'll just try to summarize, amending the town bylaws, Title Three, Article Three, repairs of private ways to revise the number or percentage of abutters required for a betterment petition when representing an association by increasing the required deposit before work can commence and eliminating the, the deposit requirement for repairs to private ways when those repairs are financed by the town. If you're in favor of that change to the town bylaws, press one for yes. If you're opposed, press two for no, three to abstain. Voting is closed. This is a majority vote. And can we show the, the, the voting results? Oh. The computer's still counting. Okay, we have 109, it, it passes. 196 in the affirmative, 10 in the negative, six abstentions. Um, so the motion carries. That brings us to Article 8. Uh, Mr. DeCourcy? We have a point of order. Barry Jaspin, Precinct 18. Is the green light supposed to come on when we're supposed to vote? I was waiting for it, and it didn't. Oh, it was on for, for quite some time, yeah. No, it was not. It was on and then and it turned off toward the end. And then, yeah, so it, I, I did see it on. Yeah, it was on. Right, I was reading while, yeah, concurrently with the light being on, yes. I was giving folks an opportunity to vote. I'll try to be more clear about that in the future so we can uh, multi I, I see your point, though. Yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll try to make that more clear next time. Uh, so we now have Article 8 before us. Mr. DeCourcy. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Steve DeCourcy, Select Board Chair. Um, I'm going to move to uh, lay Articles 8, 9, and 10 on the table. Um, reason for that is the Select Board this evening reconsidered its votes on Articles 8 and 9. Um, there is a town meeting uh, committee procedures report that is attached in the annotated warrant and there's some recommendations in that that we can reconsidered. Uh, we want to give town meeting members some time to distribute what our votes were uh, on that and, and the effect of it is we flip-flopped eight and nine. Eight and right now is a will report. Nine was a no action. Eight will, once we get it out to you, will be a no action and nine will be a favorable action but we want to give some time for um, town meeting members to consider that. Okay, so we have a, a, we have a motion to lay articles eight, nine, and 10 upon the table to be taken up at a later evening. Uh, and I heard a second. Okay. We have a second over here, Mr. Moore. Uh, all those in favor, and this is a two thirds vote, all those in favor of laying articles eight, nine, and 10 on the table uh, to give the meeting time to digest uh, decisions that the select board made tonight just prior uh, to town meeting, uh, uh, say yes. Yes. All those opposed? No, uh, it passes. So articles eight, nine, and 10 are now on the table. That brings us to article 11. Uh, Mr. DeCourcy? Oh, uh, Mr. Feeney, you're gonna take this? Go ahead. Uh, thank you, Mr. Moderator. Jim Feeney, town manager. Uh, standing in for Mr. DeCourcy as he recused himself on this article previously. So on behalf of the select board, I will note that the board uh, voted 4-0 with Mr. DeCourcy recusing himself to move favorable action on Article 11, which seeks some minor changes to the definition section of our previously approved bylaw to achieve uniformity with the uh, model bylaw offered by the Department of Energy Resources. So this was done uh, or is proposed at their request, and I would invite uh, Claire Ricker, Director of Planning and Community Development, to offer more detail on this article. Okay. And can we switch over just briefly to the speaker queue and clear that so folks can see 
uh, that we're starting from a clean slate. Let's clear this. Uh, and you can, uh, once this clears, uh, folks can start clicking in if you're interested to speak. Ms. Ricker? Thank you very much. There's, I think there's a presentation. Yeah, can we bring up the slides, please? Oh, fantastic. Great. All right. Thank you, town meeting, for your time this evening. I am Claire Ricker. I am uh, your director of planning and uh, community development here at the town. Um, this presentation will review Warren Article 11, fossil fuel-free bylaw language changes. We can do the next slide. The purpose of Warren Article 11 is to see if town meeting will vote to include certain large additions and changes of use in the definition of major renovation and the town's recently passed fossil fuel-free bylaw. These types of renovation projects would then also be required to be fossil fuel free under the bylaw, in addition to large alterations. Next slide, please. First, some background. Arlington Special Town Meeting this past fall voted to adopt a new fossil fuel free bylaw, which enables the town's participation in the municipal fossil fuel free building demonstration program. Arlington was formally accepted into the demonstration program in February, and the town's bylaw officially takes effect on May 21st of this year. Next slide, please. DOER has recommended that Arlington revise the definition of major renovations in this bylaw. DOER's reasoning is that the update would align Arlington's definition with the intended definition put forth in its model rule for communities participating in the demonstration program, standardizing how the various fossil fuel free prohibitions across communities are applied. DOER also noted that the definition update would provide a more complete picture of the impact of prohibiting fossil fuels and major renovations. The town's Clean Energy Future Committee voted in support of DOER's recommendation and the opportunity to apply the bylaw to more projects in Arlington, given the urgency of climate change. Next slide, please. As a reminder, the fossil fuel free bylaw prohibits installation of equipment or appliances that utilize fossil fuels as part of major renovations or in addition to new construction. There are several exemptions in this bylaw, including for research and medical facilities, for hot water and large buildings, utility side connections, backup generators, portable propane appliances, extension or modification of existing heating systems, and repair of unsafe piping. There is also a process for waivers and appeals. Next slide, please. This slide summarizes the types of projects that are currently included in the definition of major renovations. These projects are low-rise residential alterations exceeding half the existing condition space and commercial alterations exceeding half of the existing condition space or commercial alterations greater than 20,000 square feet. Next slide, please. This slide summarizes the types of projects that would additionally or that would be additionally included in the definition of major renovations and therefore would be subject to the requirements of the bylaw. These projects are residential additions greater than 1,000 square feet or more than double the existing conditioned floor area of the dwelling unit, commercial additions exceeding 20,000 square feet or more than double the existing conditioned floor area of the building, residential changes of use, a change of, using, uh, of use going from residential to another uh, type uh, of use, uh, over 1,000 square feet, commercial changes of use exceeding 20,000 square feet or equal to the size of the existing space. Next slide, please. This slide summarizes the expected impact of the definition change by presenting the number of projects in 2023 and 2022 that exceeded the thresholds presented on the previous slide and that therefore would have been additionally required to comply with the bylaw as it's proposed to be amended. To clarify, this would be on top of the roughly 40 to 50 projects per year that are considered alterations as part of the current definition of major renovations in the bylaw. In 2023, four residential additions would have been additionally required to comply with an amended version of the bylaw, and in 2022, two residential additions. There were no commercial additions or residential or commercial changes of use that exceeded the thresholds. With that, I conclude this presentation. Thank you for your time. Great, thank you. Let's uh, switch over to the speaker queue. Let me just tell you, we have no uh, subsidiary motions filed. Let's take uh, Mr. Jaspin first. Pass. Pass. Uh, Mr. Fisher, Mr. Pi Fisher. Pass. Pass. Uh, Dr. Meeks. Pass. Pass. Uh, Mr. Moore. 
Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Christopher Moore, Precinct 14. I just have a quick question on what is a residential change of use that doesn't turn it into, say, commercial? What other sorts of changes of use are included here? Uh, Director Ricker or uh, uh, Mr. Champa? Mike Champa, Director of Inspectional Services. So a uh, residential change of, uh, change of use in that case would be changing from a residential use to a commercial use. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, uh, uh, Mr. Varglo? Uh, in the balcony, do you have, yep. Uh, name and precinct, please. Uh, Mustafa Varglo, Precinct 10. Um, it says in the uh, document um, that the, the, if, um, the bylaw goes in effect May 21 this year, and um, I thought that we had to have these be reviewed by the Attorney General and they would go into effect in September, and I actually don't, don't really care either way, but I just do want to clarify when it would go into effect. Thank you. Uh, May, May 21st, did you, uh, May 1st, what was, I didn't see that in the... May 21st, 2024 is what I saw. Uh, let's see, I don't see that in the annotated warrants copy under article. Um, I saw it in the uh, presentation slides. Oh, okay. I think. Uh, Director Rickert, Rick, do you wanna address that? Um, slide three. Sure, thank Bylaw you. will take effect May 21, 2024. Yeah. I'm, I am, again, Claire Ricker. I'm your Director of uh, Planning and, and uh, Community Development here for the town. Um, uh, this uh, bylaw is due to go into effect on May 21st, and at this point we have no reason to, um, to think uh, anything otherwise. So would these... Uh, the point, of, point of information is not a thing, uh, Mr. Varaglou, you saw the floor. Um, oh, Mr. Cunningham, you have an answer? Uh, no, no, there's, yeah. Okay. Michael Cunningham, Town Council, it's a, it's a good question. Um, obviously all bylaws are subject to review by the Attorney General's Municipal Law Unit and do, cannot go in effect prior to approval by that unit. However, because of the timeliness of this particular, we did it last fall, it's a very, uh, exclusive program to which Arlington has been admitted, one of only 10 communities. We've been uh, told that it will be give, given expeditious appeal by the Attorney General's office to the extent that it passes. Um, so if, it, if it's able to achieve that, it would, it would uh, be in effect on that date. If it is not, it would be in effect on whatever date the Attorney General's office is able to approve it. Okay. So this amendment that we're voting on, or this, this, are, this would be in effect much quicker than usual. So. I'm sorry, I couldn't hear that. I can you speak sorry, more? So this would be in effect basically, you know, in a month. Um, so, okay, thank you. If, if possible or if approved. Michael Cunningham, Town Council. That is the hope because there, was a, there were deadlines in place for the participation in this demonstration project. And for us to meet those deadlines, we, we'd hope for an expedited appeal from the Attorney General's office. Okay, thank you. Thank you for clarifying here. Uh, let's see, we've heard from some of these speakers before. Let's skip down to Mr. Gast. I don't think we've heard from anyone from this, uh, uh, the satellite room tonight. So can we take Mr. Gast from the satellite room, please? I will determine debate. Oh, okay. Um, okay, we have a motion to terminate debate and we have a second. All those in favor of terminating debate uh, on Article 11, uh, say yes. Yes. All those opposed, say no. No. Uh, debate is terminated. Uh, so let's now uh, bring, a, uh, bring up a vote screen for the main motion under Article 11. Um, we can open voting right away. Uh, don't wait for me to finish, but uh, let's keep it open for a little bit. And so you can vote now, uh, and I'll try to make sure that we have, little, we have extra time after I finish reading the summary of the, uh, the, the, the vote, which is to amend the town bylaws, Title VI, Article 10, Section 1, called Prohibition on New Fossil Fuel Infrastructure in New Construction and Major Renovation. Um, uh, let's see, hold on. To update the definition of major renovation, let's see. Yeah, and I'm not gonna read all those details. 
Uh, we've already covered that. So if you are, we'll leave voting open for a bit. Uh, all those in favor of uh, these changes to the town bylaws, you'd vote one for yes. Uh, if you're opposed to these changes to the town bylaws, vote two for no or three to abstain. So let's leave, leave voting open, open uh, for a bit longer. And this is the main motion, and it is a majority vote. Okay, we, we can start wrapping up voting now. Okay. And the motion passes. 195 in the affirmative, 14 in the negative, four abstentions. That brings us to Article 12. Uh, Mr. DeCourcy? I will point out that it is 10.30 right now, and uh, Okay, so we have a motion from Mr. Moore to adjourn. Do we have a second? And I just want to remind folks, because we're doing something new here, there could be motions to adjourn at different times during the evening. Uh, there's, uh, um, the motion to adjourn cannot interrupt the speaker in the middle of their speaking time. It's in, it's in the book. Um, <laughs> so we have a motion to adjourn. Uh, and something I don't think we've contemplated this yet, that uh, usually the Finance Committee Chair will uh, 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 give notice of reconsideration on finance articles that were voted before we adjourn. Um, but since we don't know if we're going to be going for another half hour or not, let, let, let's take an opportunity to do that now in the, in, in the eventuality that we actually do adjourn. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Christine Deschler, Chair of the Finance Committee. Having voted on the prevailing side, I give notice of reconsideration of articles 37, 38, 41, 43, 44, 46, 47, 51, 52, 58, 60, 61, 62, and 63. Okay. Am I correct that those are all the finance report articles that, uh, with recommended votes that we voted tonight? Correct. Okay. Um, okay. Okay, so we have all those. So notice of reconsideration has been received. Uh, so now we had a second uh, to the motion to adjourn. All those in favor of adjourning, say yes. Yes. All those opposed, say no. No. Uh, we are not adjourned. Okay, so we're going to continue with Article 12. Oh, we have uh, three standing. Four. Okay, we have more people, and we have some in the back. Okay, so let's go to electronic vote on adjournment. This is a first, this is exciting. <laughs> and it, it, it is a majority vote. Okay, if you're in, voting is now open, the green light is on. If you're in favor of adjourning, vote one for yes. Uh, if you wanna continue the meeting, vote two for no, or three to adjourn. No, I'm sorry, three, three to abstain, sorry, <laughs> sorry. It's the first time we're doing this, so. One, one, vote one to adjourn, two to not adjourn, or three to abstain, which basically doesn't count toward the vote tally. Okay, and this is a majority vote. Okay, I think we can uh, close voting now. Oh, and the vote passes, 128 in the affirmative, 79 in the negative. Uh, we are adjourned. ACMI productions are only made possible with your support. Visit patreon.com slash ACMI to learn how you can help.